Denise Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, April 24th. So the moon is in Aquarius pretty much all day. It will be going void, of course, around 8.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will be moving into Piscean energy early tomorrow morning. So we just had the last quarter moon in Aquarius just yesterday. That was providing us a little bit of a crossroads point, a full observation and illumination of the last lunar cycle, especially some of the details that emerged under the full moon in Libra, showing us where it is that we've been living in extremes, especially in our relationship dynamics and what we have to do in order to gain balance, gain stability, bring the love, bring the peace, bring the harmony back into our lives. This last quarter moon in Aquarius likely puts you in observer mode, definitely detaching from our emotions just a tad so that we can see the full inner workings of the picture of the relationship dynamics that are unfolding, of course, encouraging us to find a brand new worth, a brand new value within ourselves, to do the work on ourselves, first and foremost, implementing the boundaries that we have to implement in order to protect ourselves and really bring some of our relationship dynamics back into a state of fairness, a state of balance. Now that we've had this last quarter moon in Aquarius, we are going to spend the week Seeing what needs to fall away, seeing what we need to end, seeing what we need to cut the cord, cut the tide with. And of course, preparing for the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus that we will be having on the very last day of April. So there are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them involve the moon. The moon right out of the gate is making a very positive aspect with Chiron, the wounded healer. This particular energy does suggest that in our observation mode, in our emotionally detached situation over the last couple of days that we were able to see where it is that we've been giving our power away and where it is that we need to take that back. Of course, we've been illuminated over the last couple of days, if not past week, on where it is that we feel blocked, where it is we feel held back restricted so to speak and of course the moon in Aquarius always likes to show us where it is that we need to free ourselves where it is we need a little bit more independence where it is that we need to bust free of some of these restrictions and this particular aspect especially with Chiron the wounded healer is definitely illuminating to us where it is that we have some issues to heal especially in the power exchanges so the moon goes ahead and squares Uranus, and this is a tough aspect for a couple of reasons. First of all, the square is a conflicting point, creates a tension in us, but that tension is very much needed in order for us to realize what it is that actually has to change. The other reason why it's a tough aspect is because Uranus actually rules over the Aquarian energy. So the moon in Aquarius is pretty much going head to head with its ruler, of course, Uranus is currently in Taurin energy, focusing on shaking up and really kind of mixing things up in our physical realm, in our physical circumstances, affecting where it is that we need new routines, especially where it is that we're taking care of ourselves, where it is that we're showing ourselves a little bit more self-love. Why? Because we need to fill that cup up in order to have it overflow and affect our personal relationships. Why do we need that? Well, because many of us have been dimming our light in order to fit into relationships that we have no business being in, recognizing where it is that other people have more power and control over us than we do, and where it is that we have to take that power back. The moon squaring Uranus in this way is likely going to create a lot of emotional and mental confusion. Uranian energy is the great awakener, but sometimes, especially in a not so nice aspect, we need a lot of confusion to take place in order to open us up to clarity. This is definitely another instance of having a breakdown before a breakthrough, and we are really going to feel overwhelmed, so to speak, on what it is that we need to do in order to create a little bit bit more independence for ourselves, freedom for ourselves, emotional distance for ourselves in order to figure things out from a higher observing type of mentality. Now, Mercury comes into play and Mercury is actually going to square, create a tension point, a conflict with 
Saturn, the Lord of Karma. So we have Mercury in Taurus energy. Mercury rules over the mental plane, how it is that we think, bring information in, how we sort it out in our logical, practical, lower intellect, where it is that we make sense of things, where it is that we communicate and express ourselves outward. In Taurus energy, we kind of have the blinders on a little bit. We're focused on what it is that we want to build, what it is that we want to create from here. We've had a lot of ideas definitely pop into our mental plane and inspire us to make a move, to make a change. And we're only speaking out on things if we actually think that it is worthy to do so. But here's the thing, bumping into Saturn the Lord of Karma, who tends to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer and negative Nancy, because of course, that Saturn energy likes to, you know, slap us with uh, the truth with the reality of things. Saturn is in Aquarius and Aquarian energy is very futuristically focused, definitely focused on the dream and vision that we actually want to be manifesting. But our job is to see that great grand vision and to be able to break it down into manageable pieces that we're actually able to do something with. When I say that we become a little bit somber in our attitude, a little bit negative, a little bit of a Debbie Downer in our mental plane with our narrative, this is due to this particular aspect. And again, sometimes we have to lose ourselves in a state of chaos and a state of depression in order to kind of build ourselves back up in a better way. But this is going to be very conflicting because, of course, the Taurin energy wants us to stick into the present moment based off of the current circumstances that we're being given and Saturn being in Aquarius wants nothing to do with this present moment realizing that this present moment the physical circumstances that we're currently living in does not dictate what is possible for us in our future vision in our future dream so there is going to be this disconnect this inner conflict if you will this negative narrative that is coming at us in order for us to sort out the balance that we need to have with staying in the here and now applying the logic and practicality of our lower level intellect to the situation and circumstance, but also have an open enough mind, open enough narrative to understand that the possibilities of the future are just as real, if not realer, as our current circumstances are, our current ideas, our current thought, our current narrative. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. The moon is going to bump into Venus. Venus, of course, is the goddess of love and beauty and worth and value and pleasure. And she is in Piscean energy. So we're definitely lost in la la land. We're fantasizing. We're off in imaginary land. We're in love with love. We're trying to romanticize the past. We're trying to come up with a vision and a dream, tapping into our highest level of self, our highest level of creativity. But the thing about this is, is that Venus in Pisces is also about delusion. It's also about being so super sensitive to the world and the energy around us that we become so freaking overwhelmed that we just want to run away. We want to escape life altogether. This particular energy is also not so fun because this Piscean energy is really pushing us to wrap up certain topics, certain themes, cer certain life lessons soul contracts in order to prepare for Venus's arrival in Aries energy in just a couple of days where we become a little bit more aligned with our aggression, with our passion, with what it is that we want, need and desire. This Piscean energy, we're just kind of vague. We're going with the flow. We're high and low. We're back and forth. We're all around. We don't know really what we're doing, what it is that we want. We just know that we are emotionally trying to sort some things out and bring a little bit of peace, bring a little bit of closure to some of the especially relationship dynamics that many of us are struggling to actually end in order for new ones to begin. But the moon bumping into Venus in this way is likely going to create a situation in our external realms where a personal relationship of ours, a very close relationship will likely pop off in a couple of ways. First of all, this is a not so nice aspect. So this trigger, this activation is really going to put us at odds with what it is that we actually want, need and desire from this particular relationship. Of course, we are kind of being mirrored 
in our physical realms right now, the way that we are feeling about ourself and Venus, of course, needs to have a strong relationship with herself, love herself, value and were like value herself and see the worth in herself before we're going to end up attracting like minded individuals that are not only going to respect us and respect our boundaries, but love us, encourage us, support us in the way that we need. And so the situation in our external realm is likely going to put us at odds with what it is that we thought we were thinking, we thought what we were feeling, um, definitely putting us in a situation where we're going to have to step back and say like, well, damn, like, do I really deserve to be treated this way? Do I deserve to be feeling this way? Those are good questions to ask. The answer is likely no, but it is not about what the person outside of you is doing to you. It's about what you've been doing to yourself, your inner realm that is allowing this kind of energy, this kind of vibration and frequency to even be a part of your realm. So it is going to be very uncomfortable, but uncomfortable for a good reason. We have to figure out what the hell it is that we're doing here, allowing certain people treating us this way to still have this amount of power over us over our emotions in our physical lives. The moon goes ahead and squares the true node, another conflict point, another tension point with the plans that we currently have for the future. The true node wants us to get on the right path in order for us to be in alignment with our soul's purpose, soul's contract, soul's mission. The moon right now in Aquarius, again, very emotionally detached so that we can kind of act as the observer and see the inner workings of all the things that have happened, all the things that are currently taking place in order to put us in a position to see how things are going to unfold if we continue on this path moving forward. And whatever the situation was in your realm earlier that popped off with a personal relationship that are not at making you ask the deep seated questions on why it is that you put up with certain aspects, why it is that you're being treated this way why it is that you're being kind of uh, pulled, I guess, between your heart and your head. Well, this is definitely going to exasperate, exaggerate, put a huge magnifying glass on the confusion that you have on the emotions that you have on the questions that you have, because we have some editing to do. Sometimes we need people to show us their true colors in order for us to realize that we've been wasting our time and energy trying to write them into a part in our own movies, give them a, a starring role, if you will, when they don't even deserve to be a background character. And some of the situations that are popping off right now, especially while Venus is in Pisces, while we're in Taurus season that Venus rules over, this is an emotional cleansing and emotional clearing so that we can kind of get rid of the crap in our physical realms, people, places and things in order for us to have a clean slate and open space to actually invite new vibrational frequencies, people, opportunities into our lives that are better suited for our soul's vibration and frequency at this time and what it is that we're planning for what it is that we're aiming for we get a little bit of help here with the moon bumping into the sun in a very very positive way now let me just say that the moon and the sun had their little square off yesterday that's what creates the last quarter moon for us that tension point that crisis point that decision point so to speak and when the moon and the sun come together in a positive way, it is essentially us realizing what it is that we have to let go of emotionally in order to embody new qualities and characteristics, a stronger will, a stronger determination, if you will, in order to actually get to what it is that we want for ourselves. So we have the moon in Aquarius being the observer, recognizing the inner workings of the soul lessons of the life lessons, the karma contracts that were definitely illuminated to us under the full moon in Libra that we just kind of got another kind of glimpse, an ugly picture of some of the aspects, some of the people in our lives. And we're recognizing now because the sun is in Taurus, where it is that we need to kind of get down to the nitty gritty on what it is that we are doing within our the relationship with ourself that is attracting these not so nice situations and people to us. Again, you are a radio signal, you are a vibration, you are a frequency. So if you are stuck in some, let's call it self esteem, self confidence issues, you are going to attract people that open those wounds and show you those wounds in order for you to recognize what you still have left to heal within you. 
But this is a positive aspect. So the sun in Taurus is like, you know what? Damn, I need to love myself. I need to focus on myself. I got to get my mind, my body, my soul right. I got to build new routines for myself to keep, keep me stable, keep me focused, keep me feeling safe and secure. You know, sometimes we need a physical practice, a physical discipline in our lives that we can go kind of do every single day, whether we want to do it or not, to provide ourselves that outlet to be on autopilot so that our heart and our head can start doing the inner processing work that we need to be doing. And what we need to be doing right now is kind of letting go of old mindsets, old energy, old ways of treating ourselves, because of course... We want to feel better, we want to do better, and we want the right kinds of people in our life that are going to support that kind of vibe for us. So the moon kind of bumping into the sun in this way is illumination on what it is that we need to do in the here and now in order to actually have the structure, the routines, the foundations within our relationships that we want to be having when we consider our future dream, our future vision. Again, earlier on in the day, somebody exposed their true colors, which made us rethink our plans, involving them in our future dreams and vision. And this is kind of like a level up. This is kind of like us kind of pep talking ourselves and realizing that we want more, we deserve more, that we desire more, and what it is that we have to do within ourselves in order to actually be that vibration and frequency ourselves so that we can start attracting the people that are going to mirror back the healing work that we're doing within ourselves. This is when Mercury sextiles Neptune. Now, let me tell you, Mercury, lower level intellect. We rely on the egoic realm of logic and practicality. We rely on calculations and strategies. And in Taurus energy right now, we're very reliant on our physical realms, on our physical circumstances. But here's the thing. Our physical realms and our physical circumstances don't really give us a good feeling right now. Don't really indicate for us the kind of path, the kind of uh, journey that we want to be on. We have to remember that we've been downloaded with a vision, with a dream coming from our higher self that feels a lot better to us than our current circumstances do. And Neptune over here, who represents our higher selves, our intuition, our soul self, our dreams, our creativity, it's the higher realm of what it is that our logical, practical brains can't make sense of. And so having these two come together, it is a brilliant kind of moment where we're able to receive guidance, receive vision, re receive insights from our higher selves, from the higher realms, bring it in through the crown. Again, a lot of pressure going on in the crown this week. And we're able to bring it into the lower level intellect where we can actually start taking the vision, the dreams, the magic that we have in our higher selves, in our higher realms, and we're able to start dissecting it in a way that we can make sense of. This is essentially us saying, okay, I have this dream. I have this vision. It feels good. I'm, I'm inspired to manifest it. I want to bring it to life. Where do I start? And Mercury being in Taurus is the energy that we have working for us right now to bring our dreams into reality. Mercury rules over the way that we communicate, the way that we express ourselves. And right now, there's a lot of power in our word. I went on a rant about this and you know how powerful we are, how you have to watch about how it is that you speak about yourself in your mental plane, but also in the words that you allow to leave your mouth. And the reason being is that we are literally speaking our reality into existence. We're speaking our dreams into existence. And so Mercury bumping into Neptune in this particular way is almost blending the energies from our higher self, from our dream state, from our vision state, from our insight state, bringing it down into the physical body, into that lower level intellect, where we can start picking apart the dream and the vision and actually speaking on it, bringing some elements to life, giving us a foundation, again, Taurin energy, Earth energy foundation for us to actually bring some of the cornerstone elements into our physical realms into our existence to actually have something to start building upon so this is a very magical energy we want to be very careful of what it is that we're focused on what it is that we're speaking 
into existence. And also just be prepared for a huge amount of clarity, a huge amount of insight that comes in that feels good from the higher realms and be prepared to push that process that in your mental plane to actually conjure up a plan on what you would have to do here in the physical realm using your physical body with your physical circumstances to start rearranging your life to align with the vision and with the dream that you're now being downloaded with and now that you're inspired and motivated to actually manifest and bring into life. Here's the thing, though, as we've been talking about every single time that we are gifted an opportunity to level up, to enlighten, to push ourselves to a higher vibration and frequency, what happens? The dark force agenda comes out to play to try and prevent that from happening. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast, I went on a huge rant, dropped some huge little kind of cryptic triggers for you. I would definitely recommend you go listen to that if you haven't already. But we talked about all the magical days that we have this week, all of the prime opportunities for us to manifest, for us to raise our vibration, for us to gain insight and clarity. And the conjunction with the dark force agenda coming out pulling all the stops to prevent us from actually doing so. So we just had this magical experience, right? We gained insight. We're in alignment with our heart and our head. We're bringing those dreams and those visions into the lower level intellect where we're able to actually process it, do something about it. And then we have the moon conjunct Saturn. Let me just say, emotions are going to feel heavy. They're going to feel dark. This is where we start speaking fear into the dreams that we just had. This is when negative Nancy, Debbie Downer comes out to play. This is when we become so freaking connected to our physical realm, to the physical circumstances that we're currently living, that we suck the magic out of the dreams and the insight that we just had for ourselves. Please do not set up camp here. It's something that's naturally going to happen with some of these aspects. We have to expect that this is the dark force agenda's attempt to keep us, prevent us from actually leveling up, from seeing our dreams actually manifest. And that's why you have to enter into this spiritual war, the mental battlefield, if you will, prepared for Debbie Downer and for negative Nancy to come at you. And what you need to do is just remind yourself of the vision of the dream that you're working towards that you felt really good about the magic that it that it gives you inside your gut when you think about all of the energy that will just be surrounding you and hugging you when you actually bring your dreams and your visions to life. The only way to run negative Nancy and Debbie Downer off of this spiritual playing field is to show them that you can override their negative ass narrative programming with the love and with the light of the hope and the dreams and the desires that you have to actually bring your dreams and visions into this physical reality. Things are going to get even tougher after this particular aspect. Disclosure, uh, early evening, going to be a tough time, mostly because we are wrapping up this moon in Aquarius energy and making the transition, preparing to make the transition into Piscean energy, which uh, disclosure is going to feel very overwhelming for the next couple of days. But after this little, you know, inner encounter with these uh, mean girls, if you will, um, the moon goes ahead and bumps into Neptune. And, and this particular aspect is again, amplifying the earlier event that popped off uh, from a personal relationship. And this particular aspect is going to make it so freaking hard for you to actually think that your dream, that your vision is possible. Why? Because your physical realm, your physical circumstances are going to be popping off in a way that just does not actually make sense that you could ever bust free from this particular reality and create a new one. And again, that's a dark force agenda's attempt to keep you down, to hold you down, to keep you in a state of fear-based paralysis. And again, I challenge you to rise above. How do you do that? You constantly tell your inner realm that this circumstance does not dictate my dreams. This circumstance does not mean that I will never be happy, that I will never have my dream, that I will ha never have the vision. It is about constantly recognizing the unconscious program that is looping in your mental narrative, 
built by the dark force agenda to keep you small, to keep you scared, to keep you dark, and where it is that you have the opportunity to override the program each and every single time it kicks in by saying positive affirmation, positive mantras, by holding that dream, holding that vision, invoking the emotions of what it would be like to be living your dream in this physical realm. That's how we run this negative programming out of our mental plane. But it's going to be hard to do because the moon goes ahead and squares Mercury. That is right, my friends. We have our heart space, the moon, Mercury, our head space, fighting in this square. Think whenever I say square, think of a boxing ring, okay? You have opposing forces. They're kind of jumping around. Who's going to make the first move? We know that the other person is the enemy. We don't know where it is that we're going to meet in the middle. It is going to be tough. What happens when you're in a boxing ring? Well, you are either going to hit or be hit. And the attempt that this particular energy is doing right now is to put us at such a conflict between our heart and our head, again, our heart space, so much more aligned with the higher realms of intuition, of dream, of vision, and of course, our lower level intellect, our mind space ruled by Mercury, very attached to the ego. So now we're kind of in this boxing ring trying to fight it out, trying to get on the same page, trying to kind of negotiate so that the heart and the head can not only come together, but they can leave the boxing ring without either one really kind of being beat up, really kind of being put at a disadvantage. So we are going to struggle it out. We are going to have a hard time getting our heart and our head on the same page. But again, when we enter into the boxing ring, what we know is that this boxing ring offers us an opportunity to fight it out. So our heart has a narrative that we got to kind of get out. We got to express our headspace has a narrative that we got to get out. We got to express and although those are opposing forces right now, what we might find is that there's a lot more in common than there is in differences. And the minute that we enter into that boxing ring, we know that we're going to either compromise so that we can both get out of here without being beaten and bloody, or one is going to have to overpower the other. And in this case, I hope that your heart wins. <laughs>